This question of how we translate and transmit the faith to young adults, if you are willing to sit in that uncomfortable question long enough, it's designed to break you. This is a question about the largest generation that we've ever had in the United States. Many people say the age that we're in right now is the age of story. And you can listen to or, or engage you know, and consume hundreds of stories every week, right? You can stream them. But what we're missing is the way in which we've traditionally understood stories and that stories in our tradition are sacred. And so we're going to be working and trying to recover and recall the sacred dimensions of storytelling. Everyone wants an opportunity to share. Not everybody wants a platform, not everybody needs a mic, but everybody wants an opportunity to share a little bit about their life in their own way, in their own time. When you can actually share your story and feel like someone else is sharing with you, uh, you feel like you're making a connection to somebody rather than an institution or an idea. As a minister, I tell a lot of stories, but it doesn't matter how good I tell it, if it doesn't connect, if it doesn't have a greater meaning, then it, it doesn't have value. In the church, we work with the sacred, transformational nature of stories. We believe stories are sacred and that they change lives. This is not something on a Facebook page that pops up for a minute and a half, makes you cry, and then you move on because it draws out parts of ourselves we've forgotten about or haven't been with in a long time. It really comes down to just really the simple basics of communicating with any human being. It's not that young adults are some weird alien that no one knows anything about. If a person tells their story well, you're actually sitting with them in the hospital. You can imagine the hospital. You can imagine the nurse coming in and, and sitting next to the bedside. All your senses come alive and you actually move through time and space and join them in that experience. One of the things that's on the rise among young adults is anxiety, depression, and loneliness. That there's actually, they're finding that the more we spend time on screens, the more anxious, depressed, lonely we become. So we're in a time, a very anxious uh, time right now, in a very isolating time. Because what happens, you look on the screen, everybody's having an amazing life except for me. Everybody's doing all these incredible things, not me and so I feel more and more isolated. But as we hear stories and we come out and actually make that human connection, it changes us, it transforms us. Stories invite a kind of transformation. It creates awareness and it actually invigorates our body to act, to do something. The way Christians work with stories, the value is, does it create a deeper connection? You know, the three things Jesus talks about. Does it help that person the way I'm listening to you? And the, and, and the question I ask you, does it help you connect to your own heart, your own experience? Does it help you connect to others? And does it help you connect to something greater than yourself? Probably the most important thing, and I've noticed this in recent years as well, is authenticity. Uh, so hearing uh, the stories from these people about them being authentic in their stories, them uh, being vulnerable. And I think people my age are really good at picking up on that, especially when you see like a lot of the fake stuff happening on social media, like everyone putting their best out. You can, you can tell when someone's not being authentic. So what's your story? You know, where do you come from? What, 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 what's happened in your life that may be, you know, significant? I think that's a way to connect with people as opposed to what do you do? How long you've been doing it? Whatever the end product is for any church in terms of young adult ministry, it still should be that we're engaging young adults. That's the beginning, that's where we start, and that has to be where we end. What we've experienced today in these small groups this morning is the church. It's listening to each other. It's telling our testimonies to one another. It's listening for where God's showing up in one another. And the experiences you had this morning or in sharing your rites of passage, every human being on this planet is looking for a space like that and that's being church.